flesh ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as as many are as led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For if ye have not received the bondage, excuse me, for if ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth and painted together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, for to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall, we, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? For as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors to him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I've just read in your hearing Psalm 91, Psalm 100, Psalm 103, Proverbs chapter 10, and Romans chapter 8. The word of God is already blessed. Let us pray. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I want to thank you, Father God, first and foremost, for forgiving me of all my sins, past, present, and future, Father God, as well as, Father God, for forgiving me of all the offenses that I have committed against others, God, intentionally and unintentionally. So as I do pray these prayers before you, Father God, it will not fall upon deaf ears. I want to say thank you, Father God, first and foremost, for this is truly the day that you have made, and we shall... Be glad and rejoice in it. We thank you, Father God, for all those that at the sound of my voice that are here, God. I thank you for each and every one of them, God. Bless them, Lord. 
keep them safe, God, from all hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen, God. Father, God, bless them, deliver them, uh, uh, bring them back to you. Give them whatever it is you need, they need, Father God, because you said in your word, God, that you shall supply all of our needs according to your uh, riches and glory through your son, Christ Jesus. So I thank you, Father God, right now for today's service, God. I thank you, Father God, for all our family members and our friends and our loved ones, Block Talk Radio, as well as My King's TV. I just want to say thank you, Father God, for all those that continue to support us, God. We thank you, Father God, truly for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and shed his blood, Father God, so that we can come to you, God, at the, at the foot of the cross, God, and and, and, and ask for forgiveness, God. That way we will one day be, be privileged enough to live with you for eternity in heaven. I just want to say thank you, Father God. And you said, Father God, that we have to guard ourselves against Amen. deception, God. We have to, this time right now that we're living in, as, we're, as this year, 2013 is ending and 2014 is upon us, God. You said that we have to guard ourselves against deceptions, God. So I thank you, Father God, and it is in Jesus' name, and for his sake I pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining us here at My King Service, Pentecostal uh, Church of God, and I just want to say thank you to everyone who continues to support us here at Blog Talk Radio, My King's TV and My King Service Worldwide Fellowship Network. I just want to say thank you and praise you, everyone, but I know just like you know that there is a word from God. There is a word from God. And I just want to say, you know, we have to, we have to understand that where we're at today, where we're at today, that God is, is, is really... He's really trying to show us some things. And as this year is going out and, and the new year is coming in, mm -hmm. you know, God is telling us that we have to guard. Mm -hmm. We have to guard ourselves against deception because it's, it's getting to the point where there's so many things that are coming out mm -hmm. to sway us. And, you know, we talked about those things earlier as, as doctrines of demons. Mm -hmm. There's so many different religions. I've been studying this book that uh, there a friend of uh, ours gave me about the organic church. Mm. And the organic church is just what it is. It has no frills, no nothing, no leader, no, I mean, it's just a free for all. Mm. We know that God does everything decent and in order. Mm. So we have to guard against, so even though they may seem innocent, mm. the Bible says the little foxes that spoil the vine. Mm. So if you would, I know you're ready to hear a word from the Lord as well as I am. So please turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11. As we talk about guarding against deception. Deuteronomy chapter 11. And let's look at the 16th verse. It says, Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived. And ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you. Mm -hmm. And he shut up the heaven, mm -hmm. and that there be no rain, mm -hmm. and that the land yield not their, her fruit, mm -hmm. unless ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, mm -hmm. and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be at frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house, and upon thy gates, mm -hmm. that your days may be multiplied in the days of your children in the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. Guarding yourselves against deception. Let's look at verse 16. Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived, and 
you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Now, verse 16 gives us a clue in preventing deception. God says, take heed to yourselves. Now, what does this exactly tell us? Well, this means pay attention, take care, guard yourself, watch out. We can't just skip our way into the kingdom of God. It will take a great deal of effort on our part. Now, doesn't Christ tell us in Luke chapter 21, verse 36, to watch therefore and pray always? He doesn't just say watch world events. One of the things that we have to watch most closely is ourselves. Amen. Take heed to yourselves. What we are allowing ourselves to do, what we are getting involved in, who our friends are, how much time we're spending on this, that, and the other thing. But how close is our relationship with God? This is what we must watch and take heed of. God wants us to jealously protect our spiritual growth in him. And once we develop a trait of godly character, we should never, never give it up under no circumstances. We must guard that eternal life that has been built within us by God's grace in our relationship and our yieldness to obey him. Most of the time, we become deceived because we're not watching what's going on and we're in la-la land. So when something intrudes into our lives, we follow it because we have no strength to resist by not watching ourselves. God's way requires constant village. Watch, therefore, and pray always, Jesus says. Mm -hmm. Our God has to be up against deception all the time. We have to have our antennas out, making sure that we hear and what we hear is true. Thus, if we become deceived, whose fault is it? Is it God's or is it ours? God says, take heed.